Okay, so now we are in a position to define the quantum Fourier transform. So the quantum Fourier transform is also known as the discrete Fourier transform. You might be familiar with it. So here's what QFT sub n, this operator looks like. It's um, normalized one over square root n. It's an n by n matrix whose entries are the nth roots of unity. So omega is e to the 2 pi i over n, cosine 2 pi over n, plus i sine 2 pi over n. So for example, if n was equal to 8, then this would be cosine of 2 pi by 8, which is pi by 4. So, so omega would be 1 over square root 2 plus 1 over square root 2 i. OK, now how to make sense of this matrix? So here's, let's try to draw it out as a sketch. So, so here's your QFT sub n. So what we do is we number the rows from 0 to n minus 1. We number the columns from 0 to n minus 1. And now if you look at the jth column and the kth row, so if you look at a general entry of this matrix, the jkth entry, it's omega to the j times k. Right? Of course, the matrix is normalized, so we have a 1 over square root n in front. And that's what, the, that's what this matrix is. OK, so let's work through some examples. Um, so what's QFT 2? Actually, it might be more useful if you work through QFT sub 2. Um, spend a few mi a minute and think about what it is. And when you're ready, let's move on and let's um, think about what's the four-dimensional quantum Fourier transform. So to figure this out, we must figure out first what's omega, which is the fourth root of unity. It's e to the 2 pi i over 4. And that's actually i. So the fourth roots of unity are 1 i, i squared, i cubed. i squared is minus 1. i cubed is minus i. And so QFT sub 4 is just well, we have a normalization factor of half. First row is easy. Second row is 1 i, i squared, i cubed. Third row is 1 i squared. i squared is what? Sorry, let's, let's fill in these. 1 i, i squared is minus 1. i cubed is minus i. Third row is 1 minus 1. So 1 i squared, i to the fourth, which is 1 i to the sixth minus 1. Fourth row is 1, i cubed is minus i, i to the sixth. Well, that's the same as i squared, so it's minus 1. i to the ninth is the same as i, so that's what it is. Now, you'll notice that there was something I was doing here, which is, for example, in this entry I said, well, i to the nine. Well, we know i to the 4th is 1, so i to the 8th is 1, so i to the 9 is the same thing as i. So this is something that we do just routinely when we are working with the nth root of unity. So if we have omega is e to the 2 pi i over n, so omega to the n equal to 1. So now if you want to raise omega to some power m, where m is larger than n, then we may as well figure out what's the remainder when we divide m by n. So in other words, we divide m by n. So we write m equal to some quotient times n plus some remainder. So the remainder is between 0 and n minus 1. And now we say omega to the m is the same as omega to the q times n plus r. But omega to the q times n, so this is omega to the q times n times omega to the r, but this is equal to 1. And so this is just omega to the r. OK, what we are doing here, there's a fancy name for this. It's called modular arithmetic. So 
what we write is that since we can cast out any multiples of n, we just write r is congruent to m modulo n. So we are working mod n, we are casting out multiples of n, and so if you have a number m, we can replace it by the remainder. This is called modular arithmetic. We are going to use this. It's a very simple concept. We are, we are going to use it repeatedly in, these, in the next lecture on factoring, and implicitly in this lecture on the quantum Fourier transform. Now, if you would like to learn more about modular arithmetic, much more than you need to know for, this, for the purposes of what we are doing here, I'd, I'd refer to this uh, online chapters of this book on algorithms. I believe chapter one covers this material in much greater depth than, you know, as much depth as you'd like, you'd like to know. Okay, so back to our example. So that's our quantum Fourier transform. Now, how do we apply it? So we apply it to a state. So what, what does our state look like? Well, our state is going to look like either, you could write it as like this, right? It's a vector, it's a unit vector in this four-dimensional complex vector space, or you could write it in ket notation, so it would be alpha zero, zero, plus alpha one, one, alpha two, two, alpha three, three. This is the state of our system. Now, what does our system look like? Well, it's actually a two-qubit system, so we represent this by two qubits, and so, you might be thinking, what do you mean? You know, this, the states of a two-qubit system were not 0, 1, 2, 3. They were 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. But that's just binary notation for 0, 1, 2, and 3. OK, so now what do we get as output? We get as output some new superposition, beta naught, beta one, beta two, beta three. Let's do an example. So suppose we were, we started off with um, in the state equal to two. We apply the quantum Fourier transform. What's the new state? Well, if you're in the state two, alpha two is equal to one. These two are, the, all the rest are zero. So what are we picking out? We are picking out this third column here. So we get 1 over 2, 0, minus 1 over 2, 1, plus 1 over 2, 2, minus 1 over 2, 3. Okay, make sure you understand why we get this. 